Hello people. Today we are talking about the Infinity War movie and I did see it on release day because I can't deal with the trauma of spoilers. Some real talk if you are new to my channel or just me as a human generally. I am obsessed with Marvel. Just, I mean, purely because, hi. I am also a comic reader, so seeing comics being adapted, sort of, seeing them bring out all these characters, it's just... <sighs> I'm fine. I will do a spoiler free section just at the start to give you an insight. I was so skeptical of seeing this movie because you know the cast list is very big and it's an ensemble cast. When I think of ensemble casts it's as the Avengers where there's five or six main characters not over 20. So that put me in a bit of a I don't want to set my expectations too high but this film is two and a half hours long can you fit 20 plus characters into it? And it bloody worked. The setup of the teams was great and going in between each of the scenes didn't feel too rushed because sometimes with these big films, I feel like the scenes are cut way too short and you're thinking, oh, sorry, what's going on? Am I even watching a plot line at this point or just snippets of people's lives? But this felt like a consistent story. The balance of comedy and stress and feels was just epic. One minute you are laughing and then you're having a sob fest because hashtag help me. There is a post credit scenes, but let me tell you, day till after 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 credits, they tried to trick us here, okay? Loads of people left past the first credits. So so stay right till the end because there is a post credit scene. I don't know if this is my favourite Marvel film. But Winter Soldier is not even on a scale. The movie, not the character, although yes, that as well. That film is perfection personified. This is just right up there. I mean, Winter Soldier and Infinity War are going to be my favourite films now from Marvel. That's all I'm going to say for non-spoilers. If you don't want to know, this is spoiler warning. Bye-bye if you haven't seen the film because I'm about to say things that you don't want to hear. So the movie starts. Hello. Exciting. In space. In Asgard, I mean. And we're all just chilling. And suddenly everyone starts. Within the first three minutes of the movie, we're already thinking, what the F? I was not prepared for that because Marvel films tend to start with some dramatic scene to get you into the film. But this was a whole new kind of hell. Is Loki dead? Because I just... Sorry, what? Well, I already died inside when Loki tried to actually go against Thanos with his little knife on the side. I was thinking, oh, babe, that's not going to work. But well done for trying. I didn't think he would die with Thor just on the rock, lying sort of dead as well. I couldn't really focus for the next couple of scenes because I was still processing. It felt like a cliffhanger to the end of the film and this was the first scene. So anyway, moving on. So following on from that, we get entrances of all the Avengers coming into the movie in their respective teams. I love that Doctor Strange and Tony were put in the same team. They are so similar in personality, they were almost clashing and there, I don't really want to call it banter because it was just purely serious between them. They were not even trying to joke. It was hilarious and I really just needed that comedic relief after that first scene. And then we get Peter. Oh. Tom Holland is an angel. I love when he sees the danger, he just gets off the bus. Oh, and Ned got a little scene. Oh, I love that. And then he runs straight towards danger, as you do. Pretty much becomes an Avenger, even though he's not knighted until later on in the film. Then we go to the Guardians and Thor. That was probably one of the funniest parts of the movie. The way he keeps calling Rocket Rabbit. I was dying every time he said it. I love how they brought in everybody. But my favourite sort of introduction was of course Captain America. After the just the, the vision and um, wonder stuff. I don't know if I'm a fan of their romance. I am not a big fan of these ships that are happening with these people. I'm so glad they didn't pursue the whole Hulk and Black Widow romance because that just kind of freaked me out in the Age of Ultron movie. But Wanda and Vision, I'm so glad Captain America's team came to break that all up. His team is so much more organized than Tony's. Did you notice? They kind of all came in a formation. They knew what they were doing. They didn't just go onto a 
random ship for no reason flew around in a circle. I love how integral Doctor Strange was to this whole movie. I love Benedict Cumberbatch so much and he plays Doctor Strange so so well. Everyone has sort of got their own plot going on for the majority of the film before they all end up in Wakanda for the big battle. I don't know which segment's my favourite because there was something I loved about each of them. The forging of the weapon was so so good because Thor is a god and he has this presence about him that whenever Chris Hemsworth just comes on screen you kind of just want to bow down to him. I didn't think that Thanos would get all of the Infinity Stones in this film. I thought he'd sort of get half and then we get part two where he gets them all. When he just started collecting them and there was only visions left. Okay so people are gonna die now. Even when he was getting the Time Stone from Doctor Strange, who we know now is the only person that knows what's going to happen, also notice he's one of the people that disappeared. Even when they had that attempt of nearly taking the glove off, when Tony's team actually meet with Thanos, is Star-Lord the villain now? Because... I have some thoughts. I love you, Star-Lord, but everything is your fault. If you could have just held on for three more seconds, you would have got your revenge. I mean, I know you were sad that Gamora died, but you would have been defeated. Why did it have to be him? He's tainted to me now, and I kind of can't deal with him anymore. I know it had to happen for story purposes to get to the end. So let's talk about the big fight scene at the end at Wakanda. Oh my god. When they were all operating on vision, I knew that was going to go wrong because there's a thousands of things to do to his mind, and yet these sort of transformer things are coming through into the country. Captain America and Black Panther are running first while everyone just fell behind. I was like, this is great. And it felt so epic. You felt the stakes getting higher as one by one they started coming in and then you had Thor come out of nowhere and it was like, you're not dead. Because they all thought he was dead, so for him to suddenly turn up with this new axe thingy. And when they opened the borders to let them all in through the front so they didn't surround them. Emotions. But what my favourite scene from that whole sequence was definitely Black Widow, Okoye and Wanda. Oh, girl power. You know when Scarlet Witch fell down and she was about to be offed. Black Widow and Okoye turn up and say that she's not alone. I was like, oh, look at you fighting together. And that's the thing I actually really love about Black Widow. Some people really don't like Black Widow. But think about it this way, she is the only one of them that genuinely has no kit or powers, some technological enhancements. She still made it into the Avengers and she's still able to kick ass as if she did have those things. Then we get to the woods. At this point I was starting to low-key hyperventilate because I went into this movie being 100% sure that Captain America was going to die and it is all Marvel's fault because all these contracts that we know are ending next year, we know who's potentially never coming back. Just waiting for the worst and Thanos died with, you know, Thor's great little hammer. Why didn't you aim for the head or the arm? I was so restless in my seat. You know when you're just waiting for something and you, you need to get up and pace? I'm a very stressful person as it is. I felt the need to just get up from my seat and walk around the cinema while it all goes down because when they all stop falling down... Here's the thing. I don't think these people are dead. To be honest, I did for a split second when Bucky ran out and he was the first one, I think. And he said, Steve, oh, like... People were just started gasping. Throughout the whole cinema, you could just hear people breaking down. Then when you got everyone else, people started dropping one by one. That's when I started to get suspicious. Black Panther, Spider-Man, pretty much all of the Guardians. And what of those people have movies coming out? So I think the people that have movies coming out are definitely coming back. As to how, I have many theories. Of course, the whole Ant-Man and the Wasp aspect coming in there that brings in the quantum states. They could potentially just be elsewhere. They could also be in one of the stones because the whole disintegration thing proves that Thanos' plan worked to half the population and it looks like half of the Avengers did go. But notice how the people remaining are the original Avengers. So they're kind of going back in time a little bit to the original team. We're gonna get Hawkeye back. So many things to look forward to. But honestly, the deaths 
were just soul crushing. Peter's was probably the worst, as, right, Bucky and Peter were the worst for me, hands down. I mean, Bucky's last words are Steve's name and just the, the ships. Their bromance is my favorite thing. And Peter saying, oh, Mr. Stark, I don't feel well. Excuse me. When he started saying these things, I thought he was just having a panic attack. But this is a teen boy. He has faced some bad shiz, but not to this extent. So I thought, oh, you know, he's just overreacting. Tony's gonna give him a hug. And when he actually just fell down, all I could think about was Aunt May sending him on that stupid bus in the morning. She regrets that now. The audience reaction in this movie was one of my favorite parts because there was some really key scenes that everyone freaked out simultaneously. One of them being when Tony was stabbed. Someone that's not a fan of the Marvel movies watching from the outside would have thought we were all unstable because every time something big happened, everyone made a noise in unison. When Tony was stabbed, silence, just utter silence. And then you just had these echoes of people starting talking to themselves. I mean, me being one of them, I really thought Tony was going to die. Peter's death had like a real reaction because it was so sad and it was dragged out quite a lot. Everyone else sort of disintegrated and it was fine. I mean, we were not fine, but the scene moved on pretty quickly. It's Spider-Man, it was long. It was like they were trying to get us to feel the feels and it worked because people are crying. I could hear people crying. You know when you sit and you try and act like everything is fine? Your face is a whole different story. My tears were just falling down, right down my neck. So the post credit scene, if you were not aware, is a hint into Captain Marvel. And then we see Thanos will return, come up on screen. So many people are probably in some other universe, dead or alive. I mean, to be perfectly fair, Whatever universe they've been transported to might not be a good place. They might struggle to survive and actually get killed for real. I'm just so scared for this last film, you guys. My prediction is Captain America is definitely going to die this time. The death of Thanos will be very interesting because they did have a bit of a nod to the comics when Drax attempted to kill him because in the comics that's how it happens and a death brings back Thanos. So I'm curious who will actually pull the trigger, as it were. But I hope you enjoyed this discussion. Do comment what you think. Tell me your theories for the next movie and tell me what traumatized you the most so we can keep on discussing. So make sure you're subscribed and give this video a thumbs up. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.